We had a package arrive from Thermal Grizzly, that's their Bowers company. And it's got this little guy in there. We're gonna talk about this and whether or not you need it. Get amazing prices on the brands you love at Micro Center. Micro Center has over 30,000 items in stock, including desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, and more. Not sure which parts to choose for your next build? Then use Micro Center's custom PC builder to find compatible parts, create your parts list, add them to your cart, and use same day pickup at one of Micro Center's 25 locations nationwide. And if you're not comfortable building it, one of Micro Center's professional builders can build it for you as fast as same day for a fee. And if you need ideas for a build, then head to Micro Center's build showcase for great build inspiration or submit your build for others to see. To see everything that Micro Center has to offer, click the link in the description below. We, we got a few of them here. <clears throat> so I, I actually saw this. I saw a video he was doing about this called the Wire View. And this is a product he came up with uh, because, you know, DeBauer obviously does a lot of high-end overclocking and custom volt modding and all that sort of stuff. And he was like, I need a way to be able to see what is happening through our GPU wires. Like what's the amps, what's the current, you know, what, how many watts is going through it. So he came up with this device, it's called the WireView. It's got a screen in there, I believe it's an OLED screen, that will show a, a whole bunch of different information. Obviously when it comes to the connector side, look at this. It's got that typical German engineering in there. It's just like, it's like a Tiger II tank of adapters, if you will. It's got a button on the side and then it's even got this little adapter here. I don't know what plugs into there, I guess we'll figure that out. But the idea is it'll tell you everything happening through the GPU current. Um, I tried to install one of these on my system at home actually, and unfortunately, spoiler alert, I couldn't because of the thickness of the water block that is on my Strix card. There's not enough of a gap between the input plug, which is right here, this is where the power would go in for a 12 volt power, and then the actual supply to the graphics card itself. So unfortunately, um, if he had like two more millimeters, I could have used it, but I can't. And I thought it would have been neat just to have another little display sitting in there. But let's talk about a couple of the things real quick, which I think is neat about this. The reason why there's so many is there's a lot of different configurations for graphics cards. So as you can see, this one right here uses three times PCI Express. So that's like a, if you had like a MSI card or an EVGA card or an ESUS card that has three eight pin, there you go. That would plug directly into the card. But reading the manual, now we didn't receive any of these, but that's fine. Um, they even have them that convert from standard PCI Express plugs like these guys right here, right? Which is your six plus two or your eight pin and your six pin. And then converts it to the 12 volt high power plug for your 40 series graphics cards. So that's pretty sick because of the fact that you could use this as your adapter. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna solve your problem regarding the 12 volt power adapter plugs melting because that's still looking like on the 4090 specifically, there's still something specifically happening in the card, whether it be current or something, to uh, cause this melter, the, this, the melter. Yeah, we'll just call it the melter. No, it's not a connector anymore, it's the melter. Um, but this is now why this is kind of fun, because of the fact that this not only has live data, it stores data. So it stores data and gives you max current, max amp, all that sort of stuff. So if you were leaving it going, which I plan on doing, like once we get this hooked up, I plan on just kind of letting it go and do its thing. This is also the 7800X3D, but it's on an ASRock board, so I feel okay that it's not gonna die, um, hopefully. It also has a couple of different orientations, right? So you've got the reverse and the standard, so whether it goes like this or it goes like that, it's gonna depend on which way your plug is oriented. So as we already know, ASUS is backwards from the way the Founders is, so whereas the Founders would go like that way, obviously that'd be a problem because the plug right there would, would hit. You would use the one like we have right here, which goes this way, that way you can be able to have it not in, interfere with your card. <clears throat> now, the reason why this doesn't work with the ASUS card is because they didn't send me the reverse, which is where that would be flipped over, which means mine has to go down this way to try and clear the block. Instead of going up, it tries to go down. The problem is there's not enough space and I don't have the reverse, which would have probably cleared just fine. So whatever, my, I can change, always change that. This is neat because I plan on having these on my test benches for multiple reasons. Now, what I think I need to do right now is I should have the triple to triple. Yeah, this guy right here. So this is the three times eight pin PCI Express reversed. This should work, but I wanna look at this. This guy, this guy should be thick. This should be a big boy because it's got three. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Boom. You know, I feel like if the 4090 had this solution, it may not be melting. These are all gonna be kicking it in our drawers right here. Not our underwear, but our drawers for uh, testing purposes. But there we go. So this guy would just go 
like that. And then we would have our eight pins plugged into there and then we'll get our readings and stuff on that. So that's how it plugs in. This is fine because as you can see right there, maybe you can, maybe you can, it's a little dark. There's no tab to click it in. So normally you have that little retention like barb right there and then it would go click. Well, this one doesn't have that. For the 12 volt high power, however, that would be dangerous for the reasons we already know. So as you can see, this one does indeed have a click on there, a little tab. Here's my first complaint about this, is when you go to put that on, and you need the retention clip for obvious reasons with a 4090. When you go to get it off, if it's in your tower, you can't get your finger in there at all. So to get it off, I gotta take something po pokey, which is just a flathead tip right here. Push, whoops, push this in. Kind of rock it. Then we can get it off. So because this is a 180 and not like just a 90 kind of a deal, that's just sort of a downside. Um, anyway, that's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and fire this up so you can sort of see how it works. We'll go through some of the settings and we'll see if maybe this guy can give us some sort of clues as to why 4090s are still blowing up. And maybe, just maybe, be able to give you some insight on your card if maybe yours is going to play. Because here's the thing, if that heat starts building up in there, if you start seeing all sorts of uh, like amp in increases, watt increase, that could mean that the heat is building up and it starts to melt. This might be a like an early alarm to warn you like, hey, something's not right. So by default, you can see the amount of watts that's going through the cable. Now don't confuse this with total board power or TBP. The reason for that is the board does receive power through the PCI Express socket. Spec is up to what, 75 watts, I believe it is. You can bet your ass a 4090 is using power from the motherboard as well. So what this is showing you is the amount of draw through the PCI Express cable itself. So again, don't confuse this with total power. It's just what's happening through the connector. Now, speaking of what's happening through the connector, <clears throat> in typical German fashion, Roman, I love you. Mein Mutti kommt aus München. My mom was born in Germany. My grandparents and my grandma's from Germany. I get it. We have to over-engineer everything. They give you a flow chart on how it works, not like a, an actual like, okay, so anyway, we have timeout, single button press. So anyway, display powered by default here is wattage, right? Single button press will then move on to display details? Display details, uh, wattage, volts, and amps. So I'm gonna push that button once. Where'd it go? Right, there we go. So there we go, 12.1 volts. 1.3 amps, 18 watts. I feel like that's the most important one because it's, it's interesting to see amps because that amp number will start to go through the roof if it starts to melt. So that would be a nice thing to notice. Push it again, we'll get min and max on wattage. So as we move forward here, let me throw on like a, some sort of a benchmark. Now we can see in real time and because this is being me measured physically by the cables, we can kind of keep an eye on what's happening. It just looks cool too. If you just want to make your computer have more blinky lights and stuff. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and apply a max power limit to it. See if that goes up. There we go, about 15 watts already right there. Interestingly enough, that's actually matching what MSA Afterburner is showing for wattage. So maybe the card isn't pulling any power through the motherboard slot. I know I had read that they were, that. NVIDIA was trying real hard to just not really utilize board power or the motherboard PCI Express power, just minimal and everything through the cable. So maybe we are seeing actual wattages right there, which is nice because that says, so that says 430, 441, 437, 434. Yeah, it's pretty much matching. And that's, if anything, that's impressive to show you how accurate the software reading is on MSI Afterburner talking to the power controller which is matching the physical like sensor. So there you go. MSI Afterburner at least accurate enough. 38 amps, 11.9 volts. Interesting that the voltage droops a little bit. I guess that makes sense though. We can now see our min max. We've used 14 watts at idle, 
458 watts is the max that we've seen yet. Oh, check that. Okay, so the E is a watt hour meter. So if you ever wanted to know like, how much did this gaming session cost me in power bills? You could actually measure the watt hours, but you, if you ever wanted to actually do an analysis to drill down exactly how much has my gaming cost me, because that will continue to tally up, then you can figure out it cost me $17 in energy bill to game this month. I don't think gamers really care about that. But this is a nice review tool if you're trying to do cost analysis on what a card would cost you. Because obviously, if this were like a 3060 sitting here right now, it would not be sitting at seven already. That's for sure, because it'd be sitting at like under 200, or about 200 watts under gaming load. You know, if NVIDIA was really smart, I feel like they would supply the fan power through the PCI Express socket. It doesn't change at all. And you know for a fact that those fans have to be using a couple, uh, at least five watts at full load. So I bet you anything, the power for the fans is being supplied through the, the, the PCI Express socket. And then all the GPU, memory, voltage controller, the VRMs is all being supplied by the plug right here. Anyway, nice short video to kind of show you this tool. It was sent to us by Roman without any warning. So it was kind of nice that that showed up because I'm like, this is a neat tool. So both my test benches are going to be utilizing them now so we can at least keep an eye on things. I do want to leave this plugged in permanently to my 4090 here to see, uh, well, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, obviously our, ours hasn't had any melting issues. A little update, the 4090 I have at home, which is a Strix water-cooled card, has been using the cable mod um, 90 degree adapter as well as a cable mod, actually no, it's not a cable mod 12 volt power cable, it's a Amazon, which is probably the like worst case scenario. No signs of melting at all, and I have been playing a crap ton of games on my system the last month or two just for this very reason. I've been leaving my system on and idling oh, like for days at a time, which I never do because it's water cooled and so far no melting issues. So I don't know, but the problem is still directly related to the 4090, 4080s and below are not melting. Um, still, still hope that somebody can get to the bottom of what's happening. If you talk to Northridge Fix, he does not believe the problem. It lies fully on the end user by not having it plugged in all the way. He still thinks there's another problem happening somewhere in the card. And he's the one repairing them. He's the expert, not me. So anyway, there you go. You guys can check it out. It's the wire view from Thermal Grizzly. Just another way to keep tabs on your system. And you don't have to just have 12 volt high power. They've got single eight pin, dual eight pin, triple eight pin. And then these are also available in adapters to go from standard eight pin PCI Express to a 12 volt high power adapter. The rigidity of this, I would absolutely trust this design. <laughs> like that is not gonna break or move or do it. This is, this is, this is a chonker. It's like the size of a Raspberry Pi, to be honest. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.